good morning. Uh, today I will talk about the joints. What should you know about the joints? Number one, what is a joint? What is the definition of the joint? What are the types of the joints? What are the features of each type? And factors which affect the stability of the joint. Is this joint stable or unstable? Is it liable to dislocation or not? Okay, we'll start by the definition of the joint. The joint is the meeting between two bones or more than two bones. Two bones, like the shoulder joint between the humerus and the scapula. Three bones, like the elbow joint between the humerus radius and ulna or knee joint between femur, tibia and the patella. We have three types of joints according to the tissue between the two bones and according to the movement of the joint. Fibrous joints, cartilaginous joints and synovial joints. Remember tissue between the two bones and the movement okay fibrous joints the two bones are connected by fibrous tissue so they are immobile cartilaginous joints the two bones are connected by cartilaginous tissue they permit limited movement in synovial joints the two bones are separated by a space joint cavity so they are freely movable. Start by the fibrous joints. What are the features and what are the types? The features, remember, tissue between the two bones and the movement. Okay, so the two bones are connected by fibrous tissue and they permit no movement. We have three types of fibrous joints. Sutures of the skull, syndesmosis, and gomphosis. Start by sutures. Sutures are the joint between are the joints between the skull bones, and the fibrous tissue between the bones is very thin, and it may ossify. So sutures are the joints between the skull bones. And the fibrous tissue is thin and may ossify. <coughs> then syndesmosis. Syndesmosis, the fibrous tissue is very strong. Very strong ligament between the two bones. And it never ossify. Like interosseous membrane between radius and ulna and the interosseous membrane between tibia and the fibula and the second one which is very important one the joint between the lower end of the tibia and the lower end of the fibula it is the inferior tibiofibular joint and the third one is gomphosis and the gomphosis is the joint between the tooth and the bone okay and it never ossify. Now, cartilaginous joints. What are the features? And what are the types? Remember the two criteria. Tissue between the bones and the movement. The two bones are connected by cartilaginous tissue and they permit limited movement. We have two types, <clears throat> primary cartilaginous joints and secondary cartilaginous joints. In the primary cartilaginous joint, which is called the synchondrosis, The cartilage between the two bones is hyaline cartilage. Since it is hyaline cartilage, 
So this cartridge changes to bone, so it ossifies. So this joint is temporary. And the primary cartilaginous joint permits no movement, so it is immobile. Again, in primary cartilaginous joints, the cartilage is high line. It ossifies, so this joint is temporary and it is immobile. Example of the primary cartilaginous joint. This one, the cartilage, the epiphyseal plate. And the second one is the joint between the first costal cartilage and the sternum. This one. Okay. First sternocostal junction or first sternocostal joint. Primary cartilaginous joint. Then the secondary cartilaginous joint. The cartridge between the two bones is fibrocartridge. Fibrocartridge. Since it is fibrocartridge, so this joint doesn't ossify. So this joint is permanent, present all the time. And it permits limited degree of movement. Then what are the types? We have a rule here. All the midline joints are secondary cartilaginous joints. What are the midline joints? This is the sternum, formed of three pieces, manubrium, body, and the zephoid process. So the first one, okay, joints between the three pieces of the sternum, sternal angle, this one, and the external joint, this one. Then here, pubic symphysis between the two hip bones, and here the joints between the vertebrae disc, intervertebral disc. This one. Compare between the primary cartilaginous joint and the secondary cartilaginous joint. What is the type of cartilage? In the primary cartilaginous, it is high line. In the secondary cartilaginous, it is fibrocartridge. Since this one is high line, so it is suffice. So this joint is temporary. The secondary cartilaginous joint is permanent. The cartilage doesn't ossify. How about the mobility? Okay, the primary is immobile. The secondary permits limited movement. Examples. Okay. Primary cartilaginous joints are present in the epiphyseal plate. First sternocostal junction. Secondary cartilaginous joints are the midline joints. <coughs> okay. This is just a small quiz. What is the meaning of each one? Or what is the type of each one? Gumfo, this. It is fibrous joint. It is the tooth joint. Sutures of the skull. It is fibrous joint between the skull bones. Syndesmosis. It is fibrous joint. Interosseous membrane. Very strong ligament. Synchondrosis. It is primary cartilaginous joint. Symphysis. It is secondary cartilaginous joint. Now we go to the third type. Synovial joints. And you can see that the synovial joints are movable joints. They permit free uh, mobility. Okay. What are the features? This is the first feature. This is bone. This is other bone. The articular surface here is covered by hyaline cartilage. And there is always a cavity between the two bones. 
the joint cavity. The two bones actually are connected by a fibrous capsule, the brown one. Okay, fibrous capsule. This fibrous capsule is supported from outside by accessory ligaments. And the fibrous capsule is lined from inside by a membrane called synovial membrane. So we have hyaline cartilage covering the articular surface. We have joint cavity. The two bones are connected by capsule. Accessory ligaments outside the capsule and synovial membrane line the capsule. Okay, synovial membrane. The synovial membrane secretes synovial fluid. What are the functions of the synovial fluid? The synovial fluid has three main functions. Lubrication of the joint, nutrition of the articular surfaces, and the shock absorption. Synovial joints may contain some structures. We call them intracapsular structures, like cartilage, or tendon of a muscle, or ligament. Again, summary of the features of the synovial joint. This is number one. This is bone. This is another bone. The articular surface is covered by hyaline cartilage, articular cartilage, hyaline cartilage. This one. And there is a cavity between the two bones. Okay, joint cavity. And the two bones are connected by capsule. Okay, capsule. The capsule is supported from outside by accessory ligaments, like these ones. And the capsule is lined from inside by a synovial membrane, which secretes synovial fluid. Structures inside the joint, inside the synovial joint, not all the synovial joints, but some of them. Three structures, cartilage, tendon, ligament. Cartilage may be one of three. Disc, articular disc, or meniscus semilunar cartilage or labrum ring so the cartilage which may be present inside the synovial joint maybe disc maybe meniscus maybe labrum or ring tendon we have the popliteus tendon in the knee joint and the long head of biceps in the shoulder joint ligament the famous ligaments are the corrugated ligaments in the knee joint, al salibia. Okay, structures inside the joint. Cartridge. This is the first one. Disc, articular disc. This is number two. Labrum, ring present in the shoulder joint and in the hip joint. Again, structures inside the joint. Maybe cartilage, maybe tendon, maybe ligament. Cartilage. Meniscus. Meniscus. Semilunar cartilage. Tendon. Popliteus in the knee joint. Ligament. Corrugate ligament. Okay, these are crochet ligaments. Crochet ligaments. <laughs>of synovial joints according to the number of axes of movement okay we have uniaxial joints movement occurs 
around one axis by axial joints movements occurs movements occur around the two axes polyaxial joints plane synovial joints and the compound joints so we have uniaxial one axis biaxial two axes polyaxial more than two plane just sliding or gliding movement and the compound start by the uniaxial so movement occurs around one axis this axis may be horizontal or longitudinal so we have hinge horizontal axis the movement is flexion and extension the other one is pivot rotation the movement occurs around longitudinal axis this is longitudinal axis this is horizontal axis hinge flexion and extension elbow joint ankle joint interphalangeal joint or joints okay pivot rotation radio ulnar between radius and ulna atlanto axial between the atlas and the axis vertebrae hinge elbow okay flexion and extension flexion and extension flexion and extension ankle joint flexion and extension interphalangeal joints between the phalanges of the fingers okay so hinge joints permit flexion and extension along horizontal axis examples elbow joint ankle joint and the interphalangeal joints then pivot movement occurs around longitudinal axis rotation radio ulnar joint pronation and subination this is the radio ulnar joint rotation of the radius and the atlanto axial joint rotation of the atlas around the axis this is the atlas this is the axis so rotation of the atlas so what are the types or examples of pivot joints radio ulnar joints between radius and ulna and atlanto axial joint between atlas and axis then by axial movement occur around two axes so we have condyloid there is a condyle in the articular surfaces uh, ellipsoid the articular surface is elliptical and the saddle some rotation with the biaxial movement so condyloid knee joint metacarbophalangeal joint ellipsoid it is the elbow joint it is the wrist joint sorry ellipsoid it is the wrist joint and the saddle it is the carbo metacarbal joint of the thumb so the knee joint is condyloid metacarbophalangeal is condyloid wrist joint is ellipsoid carbo metacarbal joint of the thumb is saddle polyaxial joints polyaxial joints there is a ball and the socket so they are called the ball and the socket joints the two famous examples are hip joint between the femur and the acetabulum of the hip bone okay and the shoulder joint between the head of the humerus and the scapula so polyaxial joints ball and the socket okay hip joint head of the femur and acetabulum shoulder joint head of the humerus and the scapula <laughs> Then 
play in synovial joints the articular surface is almost flat so in the plane joints the movement is gliding or sliding the bones glide or slide on each other we have two examples intercarpal joints between the carpal bones and intertarsal joints between the tarsal bones then the, compo the compound synovial joints we have only one example it is the temporomandibular joint actually the temporomandibular joint is divided into two joints by articular disc and finally the stability of the joint three factors affect the stability of any joint shape of the bones okay ligaments between the bones and the surrounding muscles this is a good mother good caring mother and now summary how many types of joints three types fibers cartilages and synovial fibrous joints what are the types or examples sutures between skull bones syndesmosis interosseous membrane between radius and ulna tibia and the fibula gomphosis between the teeth and the bone cartilaginous primary and the secondary primary and the examples synchondrosis epiphyseal plate secondary cartilaginous joints sometimes we we'll call them symphysis midline joints synovial uniaxial biaxial polyaxial plane and the compound so the synovial joints, uniaxial, biaxial, polyaxial, plane, and the compound. What are the types or examples of uniaxial joints? We have two. Hinge and the pivot. Hinge, like the elbow and the ankle. Pivot, like the radio ulnar joint. Biaxial. We have three types condyloid, ellipsoid, and the saddle. Condyloid like the knee joint, ellipsoid like the wrist joint. Polyaxial, we have two ball and socket, shoulder and hip. Plain, intercarpal and intertarsal gliding movement, compound temporomandibular joint. Thank you very much. And good luck.